What's interesting uh, is what you can't Google is a picture of a yield curve. Uh, if you do, you'll come up with something that uh, talks about bonds or finance, and I think that's partially because I took a couple ideas from uh, uh, economics, my economics major, and, and put them together and called it the yield curve, so my apologies in advance. It's kind of the idea of uh, a demand curve and uh, yield get jammed together, and uh, I think it's important to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about it. One of the things that I really like about op-ed, one of the things I like about operative, one of the things I like about the people in the room, is that we don't come here to um, talk about 12 things that no one can actually do anything about. Uh, everybody uh, brings any topic really down to how do I execute it, how do I scale it, and what's kind of interesting, in my opinion, over the last three to five years is uh, the, the length of time between, oh shit, maybe we should do something about it, and holy shit, we've actually got to scale it and make it work and get it to market, has shrunk considerably. So most of the things that I believe we're talking about today will not be topics for, oh, what are we doing about it this year in 2017? I think they're going to be, how are we doing, how do we make it better? Um, now, one of the challenges in doing that um, is that we had to move from it's like a five second delay. Okay. So uh, um, one of the challenges in doing that is last year we talked about how to optimize the enterprise. There's a lot of good information that came out. I think a lot of focused conversation. The problem was it tended to talk about the media business and your media businesses as single marketplace activities. So we tended to think about it as direct sales. We tended to focus on impressions or digital-based sales, and what we've really seen, what you've been seeing for years, but what we've really seen over the last 12 months is you're not in one business, you're probably in 10 to 15. Um, uh, some of you might be in two to three, and that might be okay, but we needed somehow to come up with a framework at this event to talk about a whole lot of stuff that's going on and somehow bring it down to a level that says, what should we be doing? Is it important? Are we doing a good job today? And, and for that, we took an idea that we've been using internally for a while, uh, and I've been using for a while, that we call the yield curve, which is probably not the right name for it. And it's the idea that you have multiple different business lines, different price points, different ways of using your inventory, and we all have to make decisions about what we're gonna participate in, what we need help in, and what you need operative to help you do. Um, and so I think of this as not, uh, uh, Lauren said we're here to help you. I think we're here today to understand what you guys care about and what you need, and from there to try to figure out how we can help you in the areas that are the most important, the most relevant for operative. Um, because we kind of made the yield curve up, I thought we should uh, spend a couple minutes on uh, what is the yield curve, and doing that, I think, through the lens of something we've all uh, done before, who's played Monopoly? Anyone here played Monopoly? Don? So, uh, do I have to explain the rules of Monopoly? Thank you. So, when you think about Monopoly, uh, you have a board with a lot of different properties, and let's say I just pull out, I think it's 22, something like that, the non-utilities, non-railroads. If I were to take those properties and line them up, and then graph out the rent, that's payable on each one of those, you would have what, what might be called a demand curve, right, in, in economics, or the beginning of a yield curve. And if then I layered on top of that the actual properties that you own, and then what you collect when people land, and the reason you're not hitting the orange line is we've all played this game and you've forgotten to collect the rent, you've uh, put incorrect change out, uh, especially if you're playing with a lot of people or with little kids, um, and uh, that's usually how you win, by the way, if you want to know. Um, so this, this would be the yield curve for Monopoly, right? And, oh, thank you. So, um, so that's interesting, right? And maybe that tells you, okay, here's the markets I'm participating or the things that I'm doing today. It doesn't tell you what you do to win. So. Let's talk about how you win in Monopoly, um, uh, other than quitting. So the first thing that you do is you execute better, right? So 
collect the rents that are payable through whatever kind of system you've got. Um, that's, all, that's a free lunch, right? That's a no-brainer. And everyone knows the first time everyone giggles and you're like, shit, I forgot to collect my park place rent. You, you pay a little bit more attention. The second thing that you do is you add more properties. The time delay is killing me. Um, thank you. So you add more properties, right? You add more segments. I'm saying segments because you obviously know I'm going to use this again in a second for media. But that's the second way. Now you're collecting more revenue, all of those solid lines or dollars that are coming into your pocket. The third thing that you do is you try to get people to the highest paying parts of, of your properties, right? So Monopoly isn't actually great at doing this, but the closest thing I could find was you have the go to boardwalk card or take a ride on the Reading Railroad. There are some ways to move people from places where they're not paying you money or not paying you enough money into places where they are. So that's the third way you would do it in Monopoly. And then the fourth is you increase demand. Um, and so I want to sort of, uh, I, I said, you know, when I started, this is about trying to get participation. Um, it's about us trying to understand. I guess I didn't say that. This is about participation. So here's my, my first question is, what's wrong with this picture? For those of you who've played Monopoly before. Oh, man. It has to do with the red properties. There's an Apple Watch, if you get this right. What? Who said that? Who? Double the rent, right? You have three properties. You have scale. And you don't just collect more frequently. It's right there for you. Um, yeah, watch. You double the rent. So there's an idea in Monopoly, probably related to the name, that when you have scale, you don't just have more volume. You actually can influence price. Second thing you do, can do, is you add more value, right? And when you add hotels or houses, and that's usually how you win the game, first one to get hotels and houses wins. Why? St. Charles Place is actually the most valuable property of the purples because they're cheap to buy houses on and you can drive people out of the game quickly. So those are the four ways you win Monopoly, right? You increase your execution. You actually collect what's owed to you. Um, you add more segments. You add more properties. You get people to the higher paying areas and you add more. You actually increase the demand. What is owed or payable to you through scale or, or by adding value? So you're probably saying that was really a great use of my time. What, do we, what does that have to do with, with how we're going to spend the day? And to that I say, well, what if I could take all of your advertisers and I could line them up and chart out what they pay you by CPM and how you allocate your impressions, and I might have something that would start to look like the demand curve for your company. And uh, you might then say to me, well, that's kind of not the way it works, right? People buy from me in different ways. They don't necessarily always pay the same CPM. And I'd say, I agree. So what if we took those advertisers and tried to break your business into a handful of categories, right? And today we're going to use the three direct, programmatic, and exchange to represent, generally speaking, people to people machine to machine, and then some combination in the middle. Uh, I don't think programmatic has fully uh, defined itself, but it's a little bit, in my opinion, like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You've got to get the peanut butter and the jelly on the bread first and then see how it comes together. So if we start to think about your business, our business is like this, you might get a yield curve at a high level that looks like this. I'm making money off of direct, programmatic, and exchange. I'll warn you now that while Monopoly was done to scale, this is not done to scale. When you do this to scale, it looks really weird. Um, but uh, we can talk about that later. This is done so that we can actually see on one sheet the picture. Um, and you'll see that a lot like, uh, like uh, the Monopoly yield curve, you're actually not collecting the full value, right? So what would you do? Well, in Monopoly, we say collect the rents that are due to you. Um, and if you do, you make extra money. And uh, Lauren showed the, the Kurt Hecht clip before. There is a leaky bucket, and there are a lot of different phenomenons, but one of them is the leaky bucket that says, believe it or not, for the contracts that you guys are actually acquiring in the direct space, 
we've seen uh, probably in the neighborhood of 89 to 90% delivery and invoicing against those contracts before people put in an ad management system. You see problems in programmatic around getting buyers. You see things in exchanges, right? We, uh, for those of you who are on exchanges, anyone see a huge discrepancy between what the SSP tells you you're delivering and what the ad server tells you you're delivering. There are a lot of inefficiencies in the execution of media today, and it's not a surprise because unlike four people playing Monopoly, you have thousands of people that are roaming across your board and you're trying to keep track of all these folks. The second way, oh sorry, so um, these are just a couple proof points that I referenced uh, a couple seconds ago. The second way you would improve yield, um, and in Monopoly we said, all right, add more properties, add more segments, right? Properties and media may not be as relevant to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about more ways to transact, more ways to buy and sell. So what if you break your direct sales up into different segments, local, national, we see custom teams, endemics, et cetera. Uh, what if you actually start segmenting or adding in the programmatic space, private marketplaces, partner marketplace, which we'll touch on in a few uh, uh, areas later today. We've seen exchanges, there's certainly a lot on header bidding, that is not the end all be all to how you manage revenue through exchanges. And what happens when you actually do segmentation is you pick up more money by segmenting in a way that goes higher. Um, I'm gonna wait, no, one more question. So um, what's the third, oh, uh, Caitlin, I told you I would get your slide up. Yeah, it's very important to you to be mentioned at every op-ed, um, so it's in her contract. So uh, Caitlin last year, if you think we're, we're sort of making this stuff up, did a, last year or two years ago? Last year, uh, did a presentation, talked about how NBC has segmented its direct sales in order to, to increase revenues, increase pricing, and uh, for those of you, and I'm not giving them a plug, because you should really go to the advanced TV session later today, but uh, if, when we talk about exchange monetization and maximization, there will be a panel for that later today. You'll see how we're taking and segmenting property ad slot level and time in order to generate more revenue for our customers. So segmentation plays a really big role in generating more yield. The question, right, and this is gonna be one of them, but it'll be throughout the day, is I'm not saying do all of these things, right, because they're hard. This is an example of, of ad tech stacks that would be required to participate in different places on the yield curve. So I'm not saying do everything. I'm saying understand where the most value is, understand where you can get in without too much work, um, or maybe a lot of work because there's a lot of value and help us by focusing on those areas. So uh, the third piece is improved distribution. How do I move people? You look at this chart, I would probably rather to have more high priced sales than lower priced sales. Uh, just like I'd rather have people on Boardwalk than on Baltic. So how do I do that? Uh, I, there's no chance card in media. I suppose there is technically, uh, but let's pretend like, like luck doesn't play a role here. What if you could move money from exchange over into programmatic, and that little orange box, which is not drawn to scale, is money you didn't have simply by moving an advertiser to a higher price point, right? That's the third sort of trend. That's the third way you can improve yield, uh, or that we see. Um, and then the fourth is how do you increase demand? So this is gonna look a little bit like execution, except the idea here is you're not leaving $20 bills on the ground, you're manufacturing $20 bills to, to, to be found on the ground. Increasing demand creates incremental revenue. And what do I mean by increasing demand? Well, in the monopoly example, you could do two things, right? You could scale. And what happens when you scale is you can start changing the game. So you're talking about things like convergence, right? Bringing in, uh, TV, traditional, I know people that are packaging events and media together to create more value. Um, value that didn't exist before. Um, we're talking about partnering across operative or across, across yourselves so that you take, uh, and this is really the big one and it's over on the right, um, I, I, I pretty firmly believe that, that there are two things um, that are just sort of offensively happening in the industry right now. One is, that the buy side sort of names their price and everyone comes running. Um, and I'll talk about that in one more second. The second is we're paying a lot 
of taxes in order to just execute the fundamental business, the amount of money that's moving to a publisher versus the amount of money that's being spent is, is embarrassingly low, right? And what happens when you have scale? You start taking out middlemen, you start renegotiating, you have different leverage with middlemen, and again, you'll hear some of these concepts hopefully as we go throughout the session today. The fourth is how do you create more value and therefore create things that didn't exist in terms of demand before? So here's just one example. Everyone talks about data. I'm not interested in data as a general matter. I'm interested in data in terms of how it changes the underlying business. I'm so sick of the data conversation for the purpose of data. What I'm interested in is what do we do with it and how does it move uh, uh, deals from lower CPMs to higher CPMs, right? And that is, that's a stat in terms of, if you can't see, which you probably can't, that far right purple bar is data or targeted enabled video compared to the rest of the traditional video market. Um, that's the CPM. I do want to talk about viewability. Um, so if we go back and you talk about what viewability is versus what it should be, in my opinion, this is what viewability should have done. I'm getting more value, right, if I'm, a, if I'm an advertiser or if I'm a buyer. What I think viewability did do was it took, okay, that'll work. It took your inventory before and pushed it down and viewable inventory replaced regular CPM inventory and you got the same price for what you were getting before and you actually created a new segment that was a crappier segment called what you were buying before, right? And that's a terrible trend. If you saw that picture three, four years ago when we started talking about viewability, you go, no way I'm doing that, right? I'm not gonna create a new segment to get what I had yesterday. Um, but I think that's what happened. So let's get in front of this stuff. I think that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. So um, today's agenda, you're gonna hear a lot of, and Lauren went through it, I, I won't repeat it. Um, I'm sure you'd like to hear me read off the list. But what, I, what I'd like you guys to do and to help us is as you're going through all of these events, as you're listening and as you're thinking uh, about your business, I'd ask yourselves a couple questions. Uh, the first is, are we executing as well as we can? And I wouldn't be flip about that answer because we continue to find more opportunity. We continue to find as we, as we execute better, create fewer mistakes, leaky bucket from direct sales all the way down to exchanges, there's more in, in the barrel than we've been, been collecting so far. So think about it and then think about it as you're defining the segments you wanna move into, what does it take to execute those well? I'm not saying do everything, but help us with the things that you've decided are important, why you decided they're important, and maybe thinking as you're hearing other people, what are some places that we should be playing? The third is, I skipped it, right? How do I move customers upstream? How do I get them from lower price points to higher price points? Um, that's a little bit cleaner in the exchange area, but I think you know when we talk about trying to to look at media and your businesses as a single yield curve? Are there folks in programmatic that should be paying more, or people buying off of PMPs, or in areas where we're not really extracting the value they're getting? Um, and uh, and, and are, is there a way to do that? Um, and then how do you use scale or new value to actually create new revenue categories? I think that as the day goes on, if you can help us get a clearer picture of what this looks like for your business, it's gonna create a much more fruitful 2016, 2017 for our collective relationship. I think that you guys should be very comfortable questioning, shouting, asking questions. This is just a framework, I'm happy with any other, but this is a way of actually trying to tackle a massive amount of information and boil it down into a few things that should make a difference and that we should be able to take action on. All right, any questions? Shit. Matt Bernstein. Thanks, Jeff. Yes. Um, that's a joke from two years ago. <laughs> it's like of Lawrence you. Jacket. Um, the, the one thing I, all good. Uh, oh, no, thank you. No negative comments, I, I promise. Okay. The, I do think, though, maybe you're underselling the value um, card a little bit uh, too much. I think that's extremely You think I'm important. underselling? 
underselling determining the value and helping our customers understand the value of what we present because I think as we move forward the next couple years, um, really tying in how advertising is really changing. I, I'm all for brand, and I think brand is a very important part of advertising, but it's starting to become a little bit more played, and customers are asking for really understanding what value. And so for us to push our yield curves up, to help move that curve up, we have to do a better job really explaining to our customers and to the advertiser the value they're getting from the advertising. And we need to focus and invest there. Maybe we focused a little bit too much on this side of the equation. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's a fair point. Um, uh, we met with some folks yesterday, and one of the things that kept coming up uh, is we don't, we don't necessarily want to play the Google DR addressability, you know, audience targeted game. We want to remind people of why they're in advertising in the first place. Um, and I think, you know, I, I consider that part of execution, right? I think the challenge, and, and this is uh, uh, whether it's increasing demand or, or the demand is there, the customer just doesn't know it, and we're following somebody else's, the rules of someone else's game, right? We're playing Monopoly and with life pieces or something. Um, I think that's, that's a great point, and I think, how, you know, tell us what we can do to help you there. We tend to think of ourselves as infrastructure, and a little bit less about uh, us as a, as a marketing or, or demand organization. I certainly know uh, this is sort of high in uh, Jason Kent's mind. Um, and so I, I agree, right? How do we bring value back to brand, to brands, to, to connecting with customers, that kind of stuff? Um, I think that should be on the list. Um, and, and by the way, I think it's a good question as to, is that increasing demand? Is that like classic marketing or is that actually just making sure that when we do deals or engage or interact with the customers, which is something you and your sales teams control, that we're reminding them and creating that framework. That's been, I've, I've been, 2003, I think we started talking about that. Like, we're not selling the value of brand uh, and our brands enough as, as a media organization. 